Now, the Green Party is continuing its crusade to stop the government going through with the plan to partially sell off state-owned assets. They're using $75,000, it's estimated, of taxpayer money to collect signatures for a petition on a referendum. But yesterday on the show, the Prime Minister questioned whether the Green Party could afford it. The Green Party is using your money, taxpayers' money, to hire eight people. So this is the same political party that told you they don't have enough money to pay for Mojo Mathers um, to operate properly in Parliament, has enough money to go out there and collect signatures. There's um, a degree of sort of hypocrisy about that, isn't there? Well, we're already getting a lot of feedback on this. Chrissy Sell Facebooked us to say, did everyone who voted for National want asset sales? Why not look at the referendum? Or is John Key scared that it will show a majority of New Zealanders don't want the sale? Well, I'm joined by co-leader for the Greens, Russell Norman, for his response. First of all, Dr Norman, I saw your eye eyebrows raised there as you, <laughs> as you listened to the PM about Mojo Mavis. He was being unfair there. It was never a case about not being able to afford it, was it? No, what he said was completely untrue. Uh, as we said at the time, we had the money, it was the principle. Every, every MP should be able to participate in Parliament, um, whether they're disabled, whether they're from a rural electorate, so they need a lot of support for travel, whatever it might be. Um, and so the Prime Minister launched a premeditated attack on us using information that he must have known was false, and I think that's pretty shameful. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to get you on this morning. But let's talk hypocrisy on a wider basis here, because this petition that your party is being criticised for spending so much public money on, $75,000 estimated, yet at the same time you're a party who wants to cap individual donations at $35,000. Both are effectively uh, doing the same thing, are they not? They're the spending of money to influence political outcomes, your policies. That's right. So we think it's very important to constrain um, the money going into political parties. So we've advocated very strongly for caps on donations, for transparency around spending. Um, so in our spending on the um, asset sale petition, uh, we said we said right from the start what we were doing with it. And so we're spending about $70,000 at the initial stages of the referendum process to, to get the initial petition collecting up and running. The vast majority, of the, obviously, of the petitions, uh, of the signatures are coming from volunteers. Uh, but we said we were doing that, unlike the Prime Minister, who's spending $120 million on advertising, PR spin and investment bankers like Goldman Sachs, and will not tell us how much each of those contracts is worth. He's refused to tell us. Yet $120 million would be a drop in the notion when we're talking about a, a, a partial asset sale which is going to raise potentially $5, 7000000000 billion. Well, it's not going to raise it. They're going to take the assets from ordinary New Zealanders and give the money to other purposes. They're taking our assets, right? That's what they're doing against the wishes of the majority. We're trying to run a campaign in order to keep the assets in public ownership. We think that's what people want, and we're willing to put it to a referendum, and the Prime Minister's scared of that. Well, let's talk about this uh, majority uh, feel on this particular issue, because, I mean, the a poll at the weekend showed 60 65 per cent are against partial asset sales. Regardless of this, is a referendum not a complete waste of time and money? Because we had the PM sit in here yesterday, he said it's not going to change things. He is going ahead with this regardless. Well, just because it's non binding the PM... as well, is it not, Dr. Norman? Well, that's right. But just because the Prime Minister is acting in an extremely um, arrogant manner, in my opinion, by refusing to even countenance considering the wishes of the people, I mean, you know, that's a pretty arrogant approach. Does that mean we should just sit back and say, oh, well, OK, if the Prime Minister says that, we won't fight it? Um, we are standing with the vast majority of New Zealanders who don't want this. And every argument we've put up to John Key, so we, he put up an argument, he said that companies needed access to capital. The companies won't get access to capital through the privatisation process. He said, it would help the government's fiscal position, the government's deficit will be worse as a result of privatisation. Every argument he's put up, we've demonstrated how it's not true. So what's he doing now? He's throwing mud at us because he doesn't have any good arguments left and the people have seen through him for what he is. He's not telling the truth about us, he's not telling the truth about privatisation. He was always up front about partial privatisation, was he not? And he says he has a mandate given the election outcome. Yeah, and in an election, people vote for a political party for a number of reasons, right? And so lots of people who voted national don't support privatisation. And that's why I think he's so upset about it all, is because he's getting enormous heat from National Party voters who don't want the privatisation of their assets. And that's what politics is like. You vote for a party, you know, you might agree with, say, 
two thirds of what they believe in, but you know you don't believe with everything, uh, with everything that they say, um, and that's okay. Uh, and on this issue, there is very strong feeling about it, and it's intergenerational. These assets were built up over generations. If they're privatised, it's very hard to get them back. And so I don't see why we can't have a referendum on this issue because it does have such significant long-term effects for New Zealand. These are our great renewable energy companies. This should be the platform for an export industry to the I mean, rest of the world. At the same time, Dr Norman, uh, National argues that they're transferring the funds to other assets. But, but, but what I want to ask you now, finally, though, is yeah. if you get your 300, 310,000 signatures on the petition, enough for the referendum to force the referendum, are you committed to going ahead with this? We are. We think New Zealanders have the right to have a say over whether the assets built up by their generations before them should be privatised by this government, which has run out of cash because they gave tax cuts to upper income earners. That is a, just, a, just a terrible short... Think of the short term thinking involved in that. They gave away tax cuts to upper income earners, now they've got a hole in the budget, so they go, oh, we'll privatise the assets to fill the hole. That is short term thinking of a diabolical kind. All right, Dr Russell Norman, you've had your hit. Thanks very much indeed for joining us this morning to clear up Pleasure. those accusations of hypocrisy.